Hey, hey everybody. everybody. So, so we, we tried to live stream the internet, internet crapped out, out and I have no idea what's going on, but this, this is, is the InDesign, InDesign Basics sort of portfolio, portfolio setup, setup um, that, that we're going to do for our portfolio project. project. So, so stay, stay tuned, tuned, watch, watch the, video, the video, and enjoy. enjoy. We are going to, obviously, if you are using the website as your reference, you go to the website, or for most of you, you're going to be going to your Google Classroom. I'm not going to bring that up right now. Um, one thing that you need to download is the photo marking guide. That will be attached to your Google Classroom. Um, and this is what we're going to create. We are going to create this photo portfolio. Um, it's 16 pages long, has a series of images, and I will post this to Google Classroom. So, so that, that you have it for reference as to what types of images go in each box. But today, we're just going to create the boxes. So we're going to pop into Adobe InDesign, and uh, we're going to get started here. Uh, here's the version that I already created, uh, but I'll just start from fresh for you guys. So we're going to go File, New, Document. That's going to bring up our new document wizard here. Uh, we're going to double check our units. We're going to put them to inches. Our, our width, width is going to be 8.5, our height is 11, and there is 16 pages in this document. Um, when we print it, it's going to be only four pages, 11 by 17 double-sided, but that is the equivalent of 16 8.5 by 11 portrait pages. Make sure that it's in portrait. Um, the columns can be set to two columns. Uh, the margins and the bleeding slug can all be the default. And uh, ready to go. So, so hit create, and off to the races. Oh, we're gonna name it right now. So, so you will go file, save as, as and you're gonna name this um, photography portfolio, and then underscore whatever your last name is. So in my case, it's underscore right. Mm -hmm. And then, and then hit save, save again. again. And, and then, then to, to know that it's saved, saved you should see the name, name show up in the top left-hand left corner here on this tab. tab. You, you should, should see photography, photography portfolio, portfolio uh, right, right, or in your, your case, case, whatever your last, last name is. So, so there, there are a bunch of things, things that, that we need to pull in here. here. Uh, one, one of them, them the very last page, is a marking guide, which you will not have right now today. But, but we will get, get that organized, organized in the near future. future. I'll, I'll get that uploaded for you so you can plot that, that in where it needs to go. For today, we're just going to make a big, big essentially a big box and have it we need to go. So, so lots of practice, practice today. today. Uh, we'll make a few titles, and the rest is all just going to be squares waiting for pictures. So it's all going to be placeholders, basically. Uh, everything we're going to do today will be using the um, this uh, placeholder tool. Uh, the, the rectangular, rectangular frame. frame. But, but we're also, also going to do a few text boxes. boxes. So, so to start off with, we need a title, of course. This is the title page. This is page number one on here. Page number one. one. Um, um, your properties panel, panel, you're going to want that because that has all your fonts and everything in it. We have recently updated, we should all be on 2020 for our version of Adobe CC InDesign. And the new kind of configuration has these panels along the side. So. We're going to grab our text tool, our type tool here, the T, and we are going to make a large box across the top of the page that comes down. I don't know, mine is coming down about two inches. Yours can come a little, let's say two and a half inches, just to say. Roughly there. And inside that box, you want to obviously type uh, photography 10, and then Go to, go to the, the next, next line, line and type, type portfolio, and then we're going to do one, one more line, line and I'm going to call this block one. one. And I'll my name on right. right. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm a big, big sucker, sucker for, for things, things being centered, centered. So, so I'm going to highlight all the text that, that I just typed. typed. I am, I am going, going to go to the, the paragraph, paragraph settings, settings here, and I am going, going to center, center that whole block, block of text. text. I, am I am then going, going to highlight just the, the sort of subtitle, if you will, the block one, one done on the right. right. 
and I am going to change this to 18 point font, and I'm going to make it bold. Although Minion Pro doesn't have a bold font, so we are going to go. Where should we go here? Let's try Britannia. Okay. And, and then, then I am I'm also, also going, going to highlight the top title. title. And, and I'm going to pick the same font. font because it's, it's always good to keep things, things consistent. consistent. Go back to Britannic Bold. But, but this, this time, time the title, title is going to be. Uh, I think it goes. No, no. Can't go 62. Let's go 60. Okay. Uh, FYI, uh, you, can you can type, type in, this in this box any amount, amount that you want, so, so I can try 65, 66 for this particular font. font. Your, Your font, whatever you, you pick, it, uh, may or may not have properties that are slightly different. different. Uh, you, you should end up with this exact thing. Charge of 10 portfolio and your name, and then we are good to go. So, so the, the next, next step, step, like I said, we're going to use this rectangle frame, frame tool, tool, the one with a little X in it. it. We are going to create ourselves one, one giant, giant box at the bottom of the page here. here. And then this, this box, box, it has a little X through it, through it which tells us that it is a placeholder, so down the road, we can select it, do a file place, and we can add an image into it. For today, we're not going to worry about any images, we're just making all the boxes. Okay? So you will then take this stroke, stroke tool, tool, I'm going to add, because it's the title box and we want it to look kind of nice, I'm going to add a five point stroke around this box. box. And the stroke color, it, by default, default it's black. If you wanted it a different color, you could change the color, but I'm going to leave it as black. black. Mm -hmm. so, so when, when I deselect, deselect this, this, if I get off of this, I have my title and I have a big, big large box at the bottom of my page. page. Okay. Moving, Moving right along, along for page two, two you, you can either scroll, scroll to the bottom and it will show up here, here or, or you can go to your page tab. tab. Or, or you can, can freeze your computer and have it completely stuck. stuck. That's, That's lovely. lovely. In the middle of the live stream, clearly this cannot handle it. Doing in design, and this is the same time. That's awkward. Oh, there, oh, 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 oh. catching up. There we go. We've, re we've recovered. Price is heard. It's all good. Not a herder. Did, did your guys all crash too? Or? Yeah. Give it a minute. It's just the, the network, I believe, has tanked. We all of a sudden have no internet access, which probably means that my live stream has like crashed and burned. But regardless, I guess it's a good thing I hit record when I did. Give it, give it a minute. You don't need the network. Just follow along. We'll keep trying to do this. Yep. Some of your documents crashed. Yeah, yeah, give it a minute because the computers really hate when the, when the, when the network, network drops out on it. So, so just, just don't do anything, anything for a second and hopefully it will uh, recover and you're able to still get back to, to, to what you're doing. doing. I'm going to stop streaming because clearly this is like not going to work because it's, I have a yellow marker here telling me that it's not working. Uh, so I'm going to stop streaming and give the network a break. But I'll, I'll keep, keep recording, recording here, so, so keep following along, along. Um, if, if you can. can. If, if not, not, just kind of watch. watch. Like, like I said, I'm going to record, record this. I'll, I'll have to post it up as a video later, later tonight, tonight. And, uh, and, and then, then tomorrow, tomorrow you can watch along. along. But basically, it's a pretty, pretty simple, simple concept. concept. We're re recreating the portfolio that I have designated. Um, the next page was going to have the title at the top. It was going to say... Horizontal photos. So you would have, and I want the same font again. Still frozen. Well, that's just no fun. 
Whose bright idea, idea was that, that right? right? Everything's, Everything's down, down Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi too? too? Yep. Oh. Uber, Uber tank. tank. Okay, okay, well, anyways, anyways I'm going to keep, keep recording. recording. Just, Just watch, watch along then on, on the screen. screen. If you, you can't, can't follow along on your thing, thing. if you, you can't, can't follow along, do it because it'll save you time, time down, down the road. road. Uh, uh, in order, order to make, make our horizontal, horizontal photos, photos, if I'm not mistaken, we have, uh, I believe we took 10 of them. them. We're going to highlight like nine, nine of them because it works, works the best. best. So, so I will make one big box. box. I use my like cheater. I hit to the right arrow twice. It breaks it into two or three columns that are even. And the up arrow twice. Gives, gives me six, six boxes, boxes that all match exactly. exactly. Um, a, a little, little trick to give you more space between the boxes is I can hold the control key and use the down or up arrow and it will actually spread the boxes more. And what that does is it allows me a little bit of space to put a title underneath each box. So when I let go, I now have six boxes. Uh, they are still selected. Uh, don't, uh, don't unselect, un-select. They're, they're all there, there ready, ready to go, go. and I, I can, can add the stroke. stroke. So this, so this time, time I'm only going to add a two-point two stroke to all six boxes at the same time. time. Uh, keep working, working very efficiently. Very efficiently. Uh, next, uh, next, I am going, going to use the text, text tool to create, create one text, text box under, under the, the first, first box. box. And, and I, I want, want this box to say for formal balance. And it is formal balance one, one, of course. course. I am again going going to center that. that. And I am again again going to bump up up the font font to a size. (laughs) Bump up the font size so that it fills the box nicely but doesn't doesn't get get, uh, too claustrophobic with the boxes boxes that are around it. Okay. Then, then I'm, I'm going, going to use the alt and drag, drag trick. trick. So, so I'm going to hold, hold the alt key and, and I can drag, drag this box out to the side. It will, it will create, create an identical, identical copy. copy. And I'm, I'm just simply going, going to continue, continue copying this till I have all nine, nine boxes with, with a label. label. What, what this, this does, does for me is it saves my font size, size it, it saves, saves my format for the, the type, type of font, font. Um, and then and all I have to do now is go in and change some numbers. numbers. In this case, it's formal about two. Uh, in this case, I have to go in here and type in formal balance one, and then I go to this one and I type in formal balance and change the number to two. And then, and then we, we have, have leading lines. lines. So, so I'll highlight like the whole word because it's completely different. different. And just and type, type leading lines. lines. One. And, and if you, you notice, notice, because of the, the fact, fact that I pre-formatted everything, everything now, now it's, it's all showing up in the proper orientation, the proper, proper sizing, sizing etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And then this last set of number numbers, boxes, boxes here is a rule of thirds one. one. There's two. You, you can, can copy, copy this text, text if you wanted. wanted. Control C, paste, paste it in the box, box. Control V, and it changed the number to three. three. So so this gives us the, the sort of top half of the page, page if you will. Uh, uh, we, we are then going, going to copy this, this title. title. So, so Alt, Alt, drag, bring the title down, down to here. here. In the middle of the page, double click on it. And, and this, this is now going to be our vertical photos. Okay, our vertical photos, of course, sit differently on the page. They're vertical, they're not horizontal. Um, and we can get all 10 photos into the space provided at the bottom here. So again, we're going to take our rectangle frame tool. We're going to draw one big rectangle that goes across the whole bottom. This time, we are going to use the right arrow. Four, four times, times giving, giving ourselves five columns. columns. One, One time, time up, up, giving ourselves two rows. And then the control key and a little more to the upside to give a little more space in between those rows of photos. When I unclick, 
it will create all those boxes. Again, I can select my point size. So it's two point box uh, stroke around all those boxes. Now I go back to the text tool and away we go with our first box making the first label. So again, it's very similar to above. We actually can go in here and copy, so copy, control C, formal balance. We can paste formal balance into here. It's going to be too big, of course, because the font size needs to change in order to fit inside the box. Um, but you can make it quite a bit smaller. Highlight everything. Find a font size that will fit in the box. Oh, no, no, that's too big. So I'm going with 11 point font. And then from there, using that 11 point font, I'm able to copy this box across to all the other boxes. So again, Alt, click and drag. Position it where I want. Position it where I want. Keep moving the boxes. A little shortcut. Uh, for, for if you wanted to move all five of these at the same time, time you, you can click the first one, hold the shift key, select all five, and now when you hold the alt and drag, it will actually copy all five items down to the bottom. And then again, it's just a matter of relabeling. Double click, go in here, this is still formal balance one. Formal balance two, and then this is any formal balance. So we have to check the I, N, F in the front. We lose our font size, of course. Uh, what we have? Let's make this a little bit smaller. So this is still in from about one. Looks like 10 point fits for me here. Informal balance. And this is a two. And then we have our leading lines. We have leading lines. One. We have leading lines. Two. And then we have our four rule of thirds. So again, rule of thirds one. I am going to highlight rule of thirds one, control C on my keyboard, and paste it into these three locations. Then I'll just go back and change the one to a two, this one to a three, and this one to a four. Okay. I know I'm going super fast, fast but hopefully, hopefully or those of you who are following along or following along, the rest of you or whatever, it looks like the internet is back up and running. I suppose I could turn the live stream on, but I'll just leave it for now. Here we go. Who knows, maybe it was us who crashed the network. Everyone trying to watch my live stream. And there we go. The next, uh, I'm joking. I don't know who crashed the network. I'm just saying. No, it could have been us. I'm saying it could have been us, but anyway. Here we, Here we go. go. So, because, because when we were working with uh, InDesign, InDesign, by default, it creates what are called spreads. So, so when you have a magazine, you've got, got the first page, which is a single page, and then the inside pages, pages if this, this was, was a big piece of 11 by 17, they would be glued together at what we call the spine or the gutter, uh, which is this space in the middle. Now, now when you're working with like four page documents, documents you, you could, could have design that goes through the gutter, and it's not a big deal. Uh, when, uh, when I create the yearbook, yearbook for the school, school having something built through the gutter is a big, is a big deal, deal because especially if it's a person's, person's face, uh, that, that person is lost forever in the seam of the book and never to be seen again. So uh, you, you have, have to be very careful what falls into this gutter portion in the middle of your pages. In our case, uh, we're not doing anything too crazy. Uh, we're actually just making four more boxes. So we're going to take our, our title and we're going to hold alt and drag it across again. Uh, so, so that we keep, keep our font and sizing and spacing consistent. And, and this, this is going to be labeled as our portrait photos. So this is 
portrait. That. that. Portrait, portrait photos. photos. We, we took, took three, three different, different types, types of portrait, portrait photos. photos. So, so we will, we will draw, draw out like this. this. We're going to draw, draw one big box. box. Go, go to, to the, the right, right one time. Up one time. Uh, and, and then, then we're going to use, use the control and the up arrow to make, to make the box smaller this way, up and down. down. As, As well, well, we are going to make, make the boxes smaller. Use, use the, the right, right control and the right arrow to, to give, give us some, some space between all the boxes. boxes. Again, Again, for consistency, consistency where they're, they're all selected still, I've let go with my mouse, so that created the four boxes. I'm going to use, use a two-point two black stroke, stroke again, just, just for consistency. Um, and, and now, now I'm going to label these. these. So, so you, you could, could copy, copy if you wanted. You, wanted. you could you take one of these boxes, boxes from here and, and drag, drag it across. Uh, it would, would allow you to at least have the same font size. Um, but you're still going to make the box a little bit bigger. Stretch it out. Maybe a little stretch it down the bottom here. And then this is going to be my... Selfie. Helps us fix color around. Nice and big here. And then I'm going to take this and then hold alt and drag it across. And drag it down here. And drag it down here. So this is my portrait. And this would be considered my artistic portrait. Okay. You may have to adjust the font size a bit. If in this case it's too big to fit inside the box. So I will make it a little bit smaller. So that's 28 point font. And then this last box is my bio. So, so in, in this, this box, box, later on, you're, you're going to click, click in with, with the text tool. I did it already, um, which actually changes as you look now when I deselect it. So three of the boxes have been exited. This, this one is now considered a text box. So, so you, you will create in this box, you're going to paste into it or type into it this information. So you're going to create, um, you're going to write a short description about yourself. Uh, where, where you sort, sort of talk about, about what you like to do, hobbies, hobbies explain, explain your photos, photos that, that kind of thing. Um, especially, especially explaining this artistic one, why it's important. Um, you've all seen my, my, my portrait, portrait one where it's me with a camera and stuff, because it's pretty obvious I'm a photographer slash photographer teacher. Um, so, so that, that is how we do that. that. Oh, oh, here, here we, we go. go. So, so anyway, anyway, so that's pages, pages two and three completed. And, and now, now we would be able, able to either, either scroll, scroll down to the next batch, batch or you can go to the pages tab and you can just double click on page four and it would now jump to page four. And if you go control zero, it will center and size accordingly to get page four to fit on the page. So page four is pretty easy. Oh, I still need my title. I'm gonna drag this down to page four. So I'm gonna, this time I'm going to Use my selection, selection tool, tool. I'm going to control C and copy. And then I'm going to pick the page four. I'm going to paste it in here. And this is going to be my panorama photos. Panorama photos. Okay. Your panorama photos. Uh, there's three of them. We will make one big box again. Hit the right arrow two times giving us three big long boxes when I let go, I get my X's, I'm gonna go back to my properties, two point stroke, that page is done. Okay, pretty simple. We're gonna take this panorama photos, copy it across, so I just, to move between pages, I just move this slide bar at the bottom here. Move over here, we are gonna click Alt, and click and drag, I've, I've got, got my, my title, title that matches, because now page five is our depth, depth of field photos. So this is depth 
Uh, field. Okay, and we had 15 depth of field photos. We had five sets of three. So because of that, again, we take our frame tool, draw a big huge box, two times to the right, four times up. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, four times up gives us the five. Boxes. Now, now we're not, not going to label, label these all, like depth of field 1, depth of field 2, depth of field, field down. down. So, so we're just, just going to leave it as the 15 boxes, boxes but we will add that stroke. So we'll do it before we let go again. So our two-point two stroke, and, and all, all of these are selected. selected. So, so we, we are, are flying, flying along here. here. We are headed, headed off to page 6 and 7. So page 6. Page six, six is our high key and low key. Do we do two photos for high key and low key or three? Pardon? Three for high key and two for low key. Okay. So in previous years we did three and three. So what we will do is we're gonna, if you control V, you should be able to paste again the title that we saved from the other page. So, so we're, we're going to quickly go here, stick this in, in and change the words to be high key slash low key. We'll use our frame creation tool. Big huge box. Now I'm not going to do the full page because there are, most of them are portraits. If you did it, portrait orientation. Um, some, some of you may not have for your low key, you might have been landscape. It um, doesn't really, really matter how you, how you set it up. Um, the examples in the portfolio that I will give you, I did all like portraits of some models that I worked with in the past, and they are all portraits. So for this one, we're going to go three times to the right, and one click up, uh, and then just kind of size this accordingly. So, so if, if you, you have, have an extra low key that you'd, you'd like, like to add, add in, oh, oh sorry, I just did my stroke, stroke here, two point stroke. Um, um, if you have an extra low key you'd like to add in on the bottom here, you're more than welcome, welcome to do that. that. Or what, what you can do is delete, delete one of the boxes, boxes and, and you, you can, can select, select these two boxes, boxes at the bottom. You can kind of click with your selection tool, highlight them, and it will select the two of them. And then you can go to the middle of the page and center them. And those, those can be your two low key. key. Um, the, the same, same process, process would be if you wanted to turn them, them at this point, point say you wanted two horizontal, horizontal ones, you could actually hold the shift key and, and go to where the corner rotation, rotation shows up, and you, you could, could rotate, rotate these around, and you could give yourself three portraits that are high key and two landscape, whatever. Or you're going to have to figure this page out depending on what kind of pictures you took for your high key and low key. But either way, there, there is, is the, the five, five boxes, boxes that you would need to create for that page. Okay, the next page gets a little tricky because this is talking about our HDR photography. So, again, Alt, click and drag, and pull that title over so it stays consistent. This is HDR Photos. These photos consisted of three photos that were identical, and then you combine those, or excuse me, not identical, but three of the different exposure, you combine those to create the individual images. So what I am going to do is I am going to create, and it looks a little funny, I'm going to create one skinny strip across the top, and I am going to create six boxes. So that, that gives, gives me six boxes, boxes that are all identical in size. And then I am going to create another box that goes and spans across the whole thing. And I'm going to click one time. That gives me two boxes that are identical. And then just for creativity and for the sake of um, our images, just to make things look a little nicer on the page, We'll highlight all of these. Actually, this is the bottom one first. Let's do one more picture at the bottom. So this one at the bottom here uh, is actually going to be a little bit bigger. So we're going to do one big square over here to the edge, kind of 
two thirds of the way there. That's just gonna be one box. And then right beside it, we're gonna click and drag down and make three boxes. So that up arrow again splits those boxes to be even inside. Now, Few things. things. Uh, I did this, this kind of raw on purpose, purpose to show you all how we can scale things to fit a little bit better. Um, um, these, these bottom three are a little too close. They're not the same spacing that we've had for all these other ones. So I can take my selection tool. Uh, they were already selected, but I'll, I'll select them again. So I just kind of click and highlight them. Or I can click the first box, hold shift, and click on the other boxes. So now they're all selected together. And if, and if I, I change the size on the left-hand left side of these boxes, boxes I can I bring, bring all three of them in at the same time to kind of match the spacing that we have everywhere else. else. Similarly, these boxes at the top don't really extend down to the middle here very well, so I can select all of them at the same time by using my selection tool and just drawing a box through them all. And then, and then I, I can, can pull the bottom of this bottom box down to kind of match the spacing here. And, and it will extend this box and it extends all six of these by an equal percentage so that everything kind of stays consistent. Now, now again, again, I can, I can click, click and drag, drag select, select my entire page. page. I'm gonna add my two point stroke to everything. And, and then, then just, just for variety's variety sake, I'm actually gonna take, take these three boxes, move them off the page for a second. Push this box up, and then grab these three boxes and put them back down in the bottom again here, where they were. So it just gives us a little bit of variety on this page. There's a lot of boxes going on, and it gives you the ability to space them out. So you'd have one, two, three images, they would create this HDR, one, two, three images, they would create this HDR photo, and one, two, three, creating the third HDR photo. Uh, I'll, I'll show you this, this is what it looks like when it's finished with all the pages filled in, in. Uh, so, so you get an idea, idea of how that's going to lay out and look when it's all finished. Okay. Let's move this back. And now, this, this is a little tricky. tricky. Uh, I'll, I'll show you, it's kind of weird. I'll show you the, the this is a single page, page version. So, so what it looks like when it's printed, printed out, out, so it says my favorites. favorites. And then, and then if you, you look, look here, this is one, one of your panorama, panorama photos stretched out, out or it could be any other photo you have, stretched out as a panorama across, across the bottom. bottom. And then, then these two, we haven't created them yet. They're, they're going to be your sticker um, images that you create and your t-shirt design that you create later on in the year. And these are just five random photos, basically. Um, what, what this is, is, is we would call this the center fold or the, the middle of the book. book. So if so I go to my pages panel here, here, I can, can see that I'm on pages. The next two pages that come up are pages 8 and 9. So page 8 and 9 are the center of my little booklet. My four-page booklet, double-sided, this becomes the center. When I staple it and open it up, you would have this looking in the middle of your booklet. Um, so, so you're, you're going, going to, to uh, of course, bring, bring the label, label in. So again, I'm going to control V um, because I still have that in my clipboard. I can paste the title that says my favorites. My favorites. At the top here, we're going to create one box that's kind of a portrait sized box here and then beside it we're going to create a single box but now we're going to use our one arrow to the right and one arrow up creating four boxes that all match we will select all five boxes go to our properties and that two point stroke for consistency on the right hand side of the page here where we have our t-shirt design and our um, Sticker design, we're just going to make two boxes, so I can draw one big one, push the right arrow, it will create two that match, I can do my stroke, and then across the bottom of the, of the page here, these actually are a little lower, I'm just nudge them up a bit. If you want to nudge boxes around the page, you can use the up or down arrows, and it allows you to just kind of 
bump boxes around for alignment purposes. And then across the bottom here for our big huge panorama, we're going to draw one giant box that fills the whole entire uh, page. Okay. And again, two point stroke for consistency. We are uh, making, making great, great progress, progress here, here, flying right along. along. So, so this is the center of our book. So again, we're on our pages. We've finished the center. We're on a home stretch here now. Um, pages 10 and 11. This is going to be your typography faces on one side and then one of your Photoshop projects on the other side. So I'll just show you. So you'll have typography faces on one and then Photoshop project on the other. So to make those boxes, the Typography faces one is super easy. Again, bring our title in. Typography faces. There's four of them. So we draw the one big box again. Use the right arrow once and the up arrow once, allowing us to have this four boxes. If we hold control, and click the up arrow a little bit more, it will increase the space in between the boxes. When I let go, I now have my four boxes. I go to properties, give them a two point stroke, which allows us to now have a little bit of space. If you notice I didn't move quite to the bottom here, um, that allows me to put in a new text box. If I draw this in here, this is gonna be happy. I will center this, uh, find the same font. If you type B into the thing, it will help you to find all of the fonts that start with B. Britannic bold. And I want to make this C a little bigger. So there's my happy. Again, selection tool, Alt, click and drag. If you, if you notice, notice as, as I get close to the place where I want, I want it, it shows me these green lines telling me, okay, up and down you're in the same spot. And if I move it over, this pink line shows up telling me I'm in the center of this column. So I get my two happies here, but one is not happy, one is angry. Angry. And then I'm going to select both of these. So click one, shift, click the second, hold alt. Drag it down and center it up and away we go. So now these bottom ones, one is going to be sad and one is confused. Okay. Our Photoshop projects, uh, we did the two different projects. One, the sci-fi space kind of thing. And, and the, the other, other one, one is, is the street lamp, lamp um, uh, masking kind of sectioned out photo. So the first, first one here, alt, click and drag the title across. We'll just call this Photoshop Project 1. We're going to draw one big, huge, giant box across the top of the page, leave some space at the bottom. This box, give it the two point stroke as normal. And then across the bottom, um, we're gonna draw a skinnier box and do three clicks to the right with the right arrow, giving us four boxes that all match. And again, we'll do a two point stroke. What goes in these boxes is the different pieces and elements that you use in the main poster. Uh, and, and then you'd obviously, obviously put your, put your poster, poster picture in this top image. Okay, uh, a little, little trick, trick, we can highlight, highlight this entire page. page. So if, if I, I highlight, highlight everything, everything, I hold Alt, and, and I drag, drag down off to the bottom here, here. it will actually scroll for me to the next page, and I, I can, can position this at the top and let go, and now I have made a copy 
from page, page uh, from page, where are we on here? page 11, I've copied it to page 12. Okay. You could do a control copy and then a control or a control C and a control V uh, if you wanted to. Um, or you can do the alt drag, whichever you, is your convenience. Uh, and then obviously I've changed this one to Photoshop Project 2. And then we are going to do your poster project comes next. Um, so we would go and we're going to highlight all of this stuff again. Alt, drag across. Let go of it. And we are going to have, um, let's see, move, say movie poster. Project. It's just a one project, so movie poster project. Uh, you may, when you place your image into here, because you're doing 11 by 17 for your movie posters, you're doing bigger size paper. It will be narrower. It may not fill this very well. So you might later on want to go in here and take this box and just narrow it up a little bit to match your finished image, just because it's a little easier that way. Um, the eight and a half by 11 ones fit fairly good, but you might want to shrink them as well. Moving right along, we got two pages left and then the final page. So one of them is our video project. So we're just gonna write for right now, we're, we're simply, simply just going to, um, we're just going to put the same title, title size of everything else. This is just going to be our video project. That does not say video. Video project. This video project, we are going to have a text box that is a description of what the video is. So. This video is a whatever is me dancing for fun as a TikTok video, whatever the video is. Um, and then on the left-hand side of the page, you will have a screenshot from the video. So if it is a TikTok one, it's probably going to be vertical. Um, although all videos, whether we like it or not, if you watch it in YouTube, they show up as like a horizontal. So it's probably still going to be like a horizontal Square like this. This will be a thumbnail or a screenshot from your video. And then underneath will be the link to your video. So this will be just the link to your video. And you'll have that in there. And then this is the description. And then the second last page, you kind of get to choose what goes on this last page. It would be the inside back cover of your book. So this, oops, I just moved the whole thing. That's not what I wanted to do. I would like to alt and then click. Make me copy. So this is just becomes my personal save or whatever you want to call it. And it would just be one single image that goes all the way along here. Again, keeping things consistent at the two-point stroke. Um, for this one, you only need the two-point stroke on the video frame. These other two are just going to be text, so they're floating. You don't want to order around them. And then the last page, um, you're going to put your title in there. You are going to, this is the, um, actually, I think this is part of the marketing. I was going to say type it out, but I don't think you actually have to. Hang on a sec. So I will put this into your Google Classroom, but for right now, I'll just see if it shows up here. So on the website is the photo marketing guide. So this is the marketing guide for the whole entire uh, assignment. Uh, everything, everything together, together. everything uh, the rubric basically. So you would, if you're going to do this, you would download it from your Google Classroom, Classroom or in this case from a website. Um, it creates a graphic for you. You're going to go into here, you're going to go File, Place, Place, 
from your downloads folder. And it's a PDF here, this photo marking guide. And when I click one single time, it just jumps into the page for me. And all I would have to do is if I wanted to make it a little bit bigger, I could scale it and do my fitting and say fit content proportionally, just make it a little bit bigger. Or you can leave it smaller, it's totally up to you. Um, but this just needs to be simply pasted onto the back page of your guide. Um, and then you, when you go through it, you will give it a student mark. I have a mark that I will assign to it. It'll have a grand total of a million marks. This is a huge portfolio. And that's what goes into Google Glass. Okay? So essentially that is your InDesign tutorial portfolio creation and craziness all in one shot. Um, I am going to fade over here. So this is me finishing it up. So if there's questions, obviously you're gonna ask them. People are going to wonder why there's half of a live stream, all this kind of stuff. So I will repost some semblance of this video. I'll see if I can download the part that's streamed and then piece it together with the part that I recorded. And uh, yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Hopefully it all goes well. There is examples or there will be examples in Google Classroom of both the portfolio with pictures and the portfolio without pictures. In case that's confusing, you'll see it with the boxes only and with the pictures put into the different places. And uh, yeah, yeah, all you all have you to do, do now is fill in the boxes. boxes. So, so should, should be, be fun. fun. Have, Have a great, great day. day.